The bigger the lie, the more it will be believed. Joseph Goebbels. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Secrets of Saturn. I am Jason Lindgren, your host. On this episode, we have Matt Landman. Matt is working on a documentary about chemtrails called Franken Sky, and he runs the Facebook pages Meet the Frankens and Actual Activists. And welcome to the show, Matt. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. Let's start with some of your background. Okay, so I'm from the East Coast of the United States. I uh, grew up just outside Washington, D.C. in Northern Virginia. And um, just after getting out of school at Virginia Tech, I moved to California and really was kind of awake to 9-11, but didn't really see the whole big picture, right? And after moving to Northern California, going back to school, I started spending a lot of time outside because I lived in uh, the country in Northern California, really kind of, uh, you know, rural area. And I started getting a lot of looks at the sky and seeing what was going on. You know, I started waking up to a lot of stuff. And, you know, the, you know, here I am trying to make a difference and, you know, awaken the masses, you know, really get the ball rolling and show people what's going on out there. So what was the first thing you noticed started waking you up? Well, well, really, it all goes back to the California drought, how that originated, right? Because after, well, my story is I, I went to, back to school, got an MBA, ended up uh, working as a finance analyst for oh, quite some time, and then left there, worked for a nonprofit, and kind of, you know, getting, working my way out of the matrix, right? And I ended up working on an organic farm for, for a couple of years. And at the end, so where I was living in Northern California, it's totally like um, a wet climate during the winter, right? It's the mouth of the atmospheric river. It's the Pacific Northwest. You know, it's a just proven ecosystem. And come November, it's going to rain for, you know, four or five months. So on the edge of these big storm systems, um, they would come and put, or this heavy plane traffic would come and, and grid the sky, you know? What time period did we talk in this, in the 90s? So this was in, no, the California drought really didn't get out of hand, you know, because I didn't really put two and two together, right? Because the storm systems would come and they wouldn't drop any rain and then the grid and the sky and the plains, you know, like what is what is going on? And that was just like six years ago, you know, when the drought just first started, right? Like I really haven't been awake to chemtrails. Since then, like, it's just been, like, five, six years. Like, I'm pretty new to it in the whole scheme of things. Like, I'd heard it passed around. I had even seen the lines in the sky, but I hadn't given it any thought. And it's, like, not until I saw the direct correlation of storm lines in the sky, storms don't lose any water, that I start waking up and doing my own research and kind of realizing that something crazy was going on. Well, that makes sense. I know the, um, the earliest reports that I can recall were from the mid-90s. I remember listening to the Art Bell show, and people started reporting these, and then just sort of got heavier and heavier as time went on. Right. And then people started finding out about HARP and really started talking about these things and calling them chemtrails. Right. So 1995, right, that's when the, the year when the U.S. Air Force introduced this paper – Weather as a force multiplier, um, it's basically a document um, referencing um, using atmospheric aerosols to control weather and engineer hurricanes and all this sort of stuff. Basically, weather is a weapon, right? And that was the first year around that time, 1995 was when all of the lines started appearing in the sky. Prior to that, there's no family photos, there's no footage. And what's crazy is they're re digitally remastering old movies like Jaws and putting in persistent contrails, putting in, you know, lines in the sky. Con um, really? Yeah, which is just, just, it's just all part of the societal conditioning that's going on, you know? Wow. Well, you know, it's funny. I, I definitely can tell in older pictures that the sky looks bluer. Yeah, it does. Even if you're, I mean, even if you're 30 years old, you can, if you really think about it, it's, it, it, it is noticeable. It really, really is. Well, I, I think it's, it's fair to say that they've been doing this long enough that the, that the sky has dimmed somewhat. It's just not as bright blue as like when I was a little kid. 
Yeah, no, um, that is that is right. I, you know, it's hard to really say how much of the particulates actually stay up there. You know, um, there's 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 theories. You know, the the thing is is like that's like if it ever came out that 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 was what is going on, the solar radiation management project that Greenpeace actually signs off on and supports. The solar solar radiation project management, like trying to block out the sun because the sun is so dangerous, evidently, right? <laughs> um, that whole that whole thing, that's people are gonna. It's so it's so twisted, it's so sick and twisted that people are actually gonna be when they, when it, when it, when it comes out, people are gonna be thankful for it. That is the way they're gonna spin it. You know what I mean? Like, hey, we set this up for you to protect you all this time. Yeah, exactly. And in reality. What is it that you've uncovered that you think they're actually doing? Oh, well, it's so multifaceted that even, you know, the people that I've talked to that have been committed decades of their lives to it, like, you know, even when you think you know everything, there's, it's so complex. There's nanoparticles you're dealing with, with technology that is so beyond our comprehension because... You know, it's just something that we that we're not exposed to. It's like total black ops. You know, you go back to Tesla technology, scalar wave technology, all this sort of stuff that went black ops nearly a century ago. Like we, we as just normal citizens have no clue. But I, do, what I do know, what I have come to realize is that they're definitely manipulating the weather. Okay, and beyond that, there's some other we weird stuff going on with nanoparticles that experimental things have been going on, especially actually, you know, it's, it's great that we're doing this um, quasi live because there have been a couple of incidences recently. There was one in Miami um, of just of this blue cloud of, of what looked like a, dis- a, a particulate dispersed into a blue glowing cloud. It got millions of hits on YouTube. It's really easy to find in Miami. Right. But that coincided with, a rocket take off and they said it was something else. But it, I mean, if you look at it, it's just so weird, but a similar one, a similar dispersant thing happened over LA recently, just recently. And, um, yeah, where was I going? Oh yeah. So there's all sorts of just weird, like who knows what's really, what's really going on. These glowing blue balls of dust being dispersed over cities and, and they're saying, Oh no, right. you know, like, so, and then there's all these rabbit holes you can go down with more gallons. Have you heard of more gallons? I've seen the fireballs, and I've definitely seen quite a bit on more gallons as well. Yeah, so more gallons is just some wild, weird, like you know. And then they—that's we- crazy. But I mean, there are doctors showing the physical proof of that. You know, that's not a conspiracy theory. Something is happening. Oh, I realize that. And that no, I'm not saying that. I, I totally feel for the people that go through it, and I totally know that it is going on, and I do think it's it's correlated to chemtrails. But that's just like when you're trying to open up the masses to, to chemtrails. Like in my documentary, like my documentary is going to be an hour long, and I can't touch I, – I, I would love to touch more gallons, but I just can't because – it, 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 as sad as it is, it it discredits you to the masses, you know what I mean, by throwing too much of them at once. Like, I don't even know if I'll talk about weather as a weapon and the fact, you know, like, there's so many different things that I could touch upon. And it's just like, we have to, like, wake people up and really pick our battles. And it's even it, it's even touchy talking about harp, you know, it, it, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah. But once you start waking up. Because it sounds up, crazy, even though it's, yeah, it's exactly. you know, admitted and shown. I am, like, the thing about me that I really want to get across, that going on these different shows and talking to awesome people like you that are awake and aware and, like, looking to, you know, spread knowledge, is the one thing that I want to convey is that I am just a normal person. You know, I went to high school. Right afterwards, I went to Virginia Tech. I went to business school. I got out, and I worked as a mortgage broker, and I worked in real estate, and I waited tables, and then I moved to California because that's, you know, it seemed like something cool to do or whatever. You know, I wanted to get into acting and film, and then I ended up studying film. I went back to school and got a master's degree, you know, just, you know, student loans, just like a normal, I'm a normal person, right? I ended up working on a farm. I ended up looking up, you know, and I ended up getting kind of upset, or actually really upset, right? And I ended up going around and and passing out flyers all over and at the university that I was going to, uh, Humboldt State University, Northern California, 
and I put together a PowerPoint, you know, and put it all together. You know, these these patents have existed since 1915 on these weather manipulation models and stuff like that. And once you start putting the pieces together, it's just it's totally obvious what's going on. You know, like like I could actually talk about some of that. You know about do you know about you know aluminum barium and strontium being sprayed in the atmosphere to to change the weather to mess with the clouds? Yeah. Oh yeah. People have done soil samples. Scientifically right. studied them, and they're and they're coming up with these massive amounts of of these uh, particles in, in the soil that should not be there. Right, and in the rainwater, right, right, right after you know the heavy spray days. But the science behind it, like, can I just talk about it for a minute? Because it's pretty, it's pretty oh, easy to break it down. Okay, right. So basically, what's going on is there's an aerosol spraying going on of metal particulates. Okay, let's just stick to the aluminum dust. You know, let's not talk about the Strong team of the barium because that stuff is just so toxic. It's not even funny, right? But the aluminum particles alone, there's patents galore out there on cloud seeding using aluminum dust, right? And the thing is, is like even back in the early 1900s, they realized that if you spray silver particulate in the atmosphere, it helps the raindrops couple all these little raindrops. They call seeds. All these little seeds couple up. And if you, with the silver dust, the rain will fall out of the sky. You know, that's how our ski resorts make it snow, whatever, you know. It's like totally – it's cloud seeding and it's totally known and they do it all the time. But if you, if you spray a different um, concoction up there, like aluminum dust, it, it just floats there with these little tiny, tiny seeds basically. And then when the cloud rolls through, it basically recognizes it as a whole bunch of little water droplets. So there's too many seeds. So when there's too many seeds – they can't couple and they can't fall out of the sky, right? So when there's a constant atmospheric aerosol campaign over your head in California, preventing the clouds from dropping the rain, right? And then, you know, the little bit of rainwater that comes out is chock full of, of these metals. You see these planes in the sky only on the edge of storm systems. You know, sometimes you see them in other times. And it's just like sometimes you see them, and not to get off track, but sometimes you see them like targeted, like I literally witnessed like a, it told, like a festival in the middle of nowhere and they just came and did lines right over just the festival. But I don't even want to go there because then I start sounding, you know what I mean? I've heard of that happening though. So, you know. Yeah. I cool. mean like, I mean like, what is that? Like that is just like, okay, these are, these are people that are waking up. Let's go make sure they're, they're dumbed down or whatever. Or is it something about calcifying the pineal, you know, gland or something like totally crazy like that? Like who, or not necessarily even crazy. That's like totally logical actually I've come to learn, but it's like, you know, like, what is going on there? But, like, if you just stick to the geoengineering, the weather manipulation, and the story that's unfolding, you know, they haven't built a reservoir since 1981 in California, whereas the population had doubled. And it's a, a, such an unsustainable, a, unsustainable living situation down in Southern California. It's a desert, and there's millions and millions of people living I mean, what is it? Tens of, I mean, it's a huge population in LA and these people oh, are yeah. all displaced. Okay. So the way that I see this, like, and I'm going to get off on a little tangent, the way that I see this fucked up dystopian little future that we're on track towards that we have to knock ourselves off this current trajectory or fucked, pardon me. Right. The Syrian refugees. So now everyone hates Syria, of course, because of the false flag that's Paris, you know? And so it's like, who cares if we bomb them but there's all these refugees so all these refugees are going to come to our different countries and they're already hinting like oh these are terrorists they're going to be terrorists it's going to be threat to national security so then they false flag some terrorist uh syrian bullshit i am syria i am isis here's my passport blow up oklahoma city or whatever the fuck right and then we go into some bullshit even furthermore police state martial law kind of thing right and then all of a sudden, oh, wait, there's a California drought. Didn't you hear? Like all the reservoirs are dried up. All these people are going to have to be displaced. And then all of a sudden these FEMA camps start coming into play. And you've got all these displaced people. And then once you end up with like millions of people in a FEMA camp, that you're like, oh, hey, guess what? You need to work to pay off this food that we've been giving you. And you're like, wait, but I'm behind bars. You know what I mean? What do you mean? You're, yeah, you're feeding me. but And then they start like creating this like – enslaved like okay that you know people that are like going to change the channel now but the thing is is it's like we're on a weird trajectory like the, the dystopian future 50 years from now think about what things were like 50 years ago right 
man, this is like a, this is kind of a meme thing I want to keep pushing around. Think about how things were 50 years ago. I don't care if you were freaking born or not. Just think about how things were 50 years ago, right? Just think about it. Be, like if you called your friend, somebody had to answer the phone in the kitchen. The, the phone was connected to a little wire. Um, you said it had to say, man, speak to Samantha, please. Oh, Johnny, hey, Johnny, oh, how are you doing? Like the mom interacted with you before you even got on the phone with the kid, right? That was how things were 50 years ago. And that was like, the phone was like kind of even like relatively a new, I mean like on the whole scheme of things, the phone was even like new technology, like holy shit, right? And now think about how things could be 50 years from now. Given the trajectory that we're on, 9-11, 9-11, all this totally bogus, Illuminati, whatever, that, you know, because if you really get go down the rabbit hole, you know that all of it is connected, and it's all totally not good. It's kind of like, I hate to use the word evil, but they got bad intentions for humanity, right? Well, it looks like it's, it certainly looks like it's going somewhere. Right, and they have like this long-term agenda, right? And long-term agenda is fucked because it's like, they're looking like two generations down the line and they're like, they'll never, they're they're thinking that we can't read between the lines, you know? So they're like coming, they're like, you know, pushing these little, they're pushing these little things like, like the nanopart, the nanoparticle fertilizers, you know what I mean? They're like, or or not fertilizers, nanoparticle pesticides. So you end up with these nanoparticle pesticides that just get pushed through and the EPA is like, oh, oh, what? I didn't know Monsanto. Oh yeah, sure. And then people are having to sue to get these nano, because we don't even know anything about what's going on with these nanoparticles because it's like so complex and we're left in the dark. So we, we we're breathing in nanoparticles that they decide to spray whatever it is. Some people get too heavy of a load and they end up with freaking crazy Morgellons growing out of their skin. You know, you're, so you're getting sprayed with this. Then you end up with all this shit in your tap water. Like, I mean, I can't be such, it sounds totally hippie of me. And I know half the people listening totally drink tap water all day long, but don't drink tap water. It's totally, got everybody's um, recycled drugs in, in them. Like all these people that are on antipsychotics, anti-everything, anti-everything, anti history I don't care what it is. These antibiotics and these antipsychotics and antidepressants and stuff, they all get reclaimed and they all end up, you all end up with trace amounts in it, in your drinking water. And then all of a sudden, you know, and then even in the shower you end up in it because you're breathing in. The chlorine acts as a vector and you're like, you know, the chlorine – escorts these things back into your body and bring it in your lungs. Your lungs are totally like porous, you know, so you're getting all these chemicals just, you're just getting bombarded. You're just getting bombarded, right? Sorry to go off on tangents. No, that's all right, man. I'm all behind the the filters in the showers and I I only drink reverse osmosis uh, water, so I'm with you there. That's so good. You know, but they've got like every little facet. They've got their, their control, you know, they've got the control of the energy, the monetary system, like that's a whole episode in and of itself, right? Foods, like, 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 come on, like, organic? 50 years ago, back to that, organic was everything. Like, it was just like, what do you mean nanoparticle, po- like, poison on your food? Like, what are you even talking about? Like, did you- Well, yeah, you go back 100 years in time, and it wasn't organic food or this or that. It was just food. It is it is what it is, right. and it was good for you. It, the soil was nutritious that it was grown in. Right, Exactly. So then, and then there's like the medical system. Like you want to go there, like like back to the Meet the Frankens. So Meet the Frankens is this umbrella mothership that I want to that I've created. To it's only been around for 48 hours, right? And it's and it's I'm just gonna it's I'm gonna push it and it's gonna go global and it's really gonna make a difference because the thing is is we have all of these divided groups of activists, okay? And they think they're united, but there's still these little sects. There's they're divided, and it's just like this divide and conquer. Ever since the Roman Empire, like the they, they, they're totally happy with our little divided little groups because we're not united, right? If you looked at my wall, well, there's, my, sinister, there's sinister stuff behind that too, Matt. Yeah. If you if you look, there's always disinformation being thrown out there to oh, yeah. get, a, you know, quote unquote, awake people in fighting all the time. And trolls, hired trolls. Like Monsanto has hired trolls. Not, I mean, Monsanto has a hired armed like military force, which is insane. But like. They also has, have and have been proven to have had paid trolls where you like you post something bad about Monsanto and then they come and like harass you on the internet and say all this stuff. I mean they've actually had infiltrator like I mean they infiltrate anti GMO groups like this private Oh yeah. You know. But um but yeah, back to the unification. So there's all these groups out there, right? Everybody's like 
like like the Monsanto group, March Against Monsanto, you talk about chemtrails, and you're like, whoa, 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 no, 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 that's not related to this. And you're like, what are you talking about? It's totally related. Monsanto has uh, aluminum-resistant seeds. Yeah. They want all the plants to die from the aluminum bombardment, so only their seeds work. The aluminum's coming out of the sky. Like, what do you what do you mean they're not related? You know, they're totally related. There's aluminum in the vaccines, right? So just under that premise, I've got three huge groups, totally faction, like totally fractured, right? All these people march against Monsanto, vaccine truth, you know, warriors, vaccine resistance movement, right? Um, the the chemtrails, all these groups, chemtrails, hundreds of chemtrail groups, right? All these chemtrail activists all over the place, right? But none of them are talking about how it's all connected, right? So under Meet the Frankens, it's Meet the Frankens. Franken food, GMOs, Franken sky, chemtrails, Franken children, vaccines, right? Obviously. Do you really want a Franken future, right? I think not, right? So what are you going to do? Your voice is your weapon. We're only as strong as we are united, as weak as we are divided. We have to come together. All of us. And then, you know, once we've got this little merger and people don't even really re- realize that they're merging, they're just happy that they know, you know, they agree with, with one thing enough that they're willing to come into the group and kind of see where they see eye to eye. Like people are so passionate about about vaccines that if this has the word vaccine on it, they're like, OK, well, you know, let's just I'm going to come in here. You know, like there's a lot of people out there like just creating this unity isn't going to be that hard. You know, it's just like. Getting us back on course, getting us back on the current, on the like the right, like true right timeline. The humanity needs to get bumped back on. That's not going to be as hard as it seems because it's the one we're supposed to be on, right? Like they stepped in with 9/11 and all this like fear mongering and knocked us off our true timeline. Like we're like we're just off balance a little bit and like we just want, need to get back to center. Like like it's not like we're asking for. Or something like totally insane, like getting us off track because we're off track already. We just need to get a little nudge, you know. Well, I think the real uh, off track started probably around the industrial revolution. I think that, oh yeah, at least it seems to be that as technology was progressing, yeah, the uh, inner circles, if you will, were keeping the higher technologies to themselves, and it was yeah. slower coming out to the general public. But now, Jason, the 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 scheme has gotten so much more diabolical, you know? Oh, yeah. Or it was like kind of like ignorance is bliss. They really didn't necessarily know better, you know? They're they're like totally brutally killing every different – everybody on Earth was just still fighting. I guess we're still fighting. I guess we've always just been fighting. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, I guess I guess humanity needs to stop fighting too and start – That would help. Yeah, but the whole the whole waking up to to the atmospheric aerosols. Did you see the EPA hearing? There was a great EPA hearing that got hardly enough attention at all. No, I don't know about that. So let's talk about that. So there was an EPA hearing, right? Environmental Protection Agency hearing about um, airplane pollution, right? And they kept it totally hush hush. But one of our activists, Jim Lee in South Carolina, he's totally on it computer wise and has a whole team of activists helping him out and stuff. And they found that this hearing was going to go down. And so through our community and um, this recent group that we've started that's merging all the chemtrail activists worldwide, we pushed and pushed and got six different activists to go to the hearing and speak, right? And um, there were actually some threats from Harvard lawyer or something like that, trying to get people not to go, whatever the story is, right? But we ended up having people there, and C-SPAN went, and there were all these people from, like, Sierra Club and the Airline Mechanics Association or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then our people were there, six people. Out of, like, 15, six of them were activists, right? And most of, like, all of the speeches were amazing, but a couple of them were, like, incredible. And actually... um, yeah, don't tell anybody, but they're going to be definitely sampled for the documentary. I guess you can tell whoever you want, but it's like because it's gold. Cool. I wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't. I'd be crazy not to include it. You know, it's really good, and and I felt like I played kind of the helping hand in the whole thing by like supporting the activists to get there by supporting their crowdfunding campaigns and and pushing them and whatnot through social media and you know giving as much support as I can from where I am. 
because unfortunately, even though I'm from DC, I'm kind of like not trying to jump back and forth over the border right now while I'm making this film because the border just doesn't really like me as much as you would, would hope. So I'm just not taking any risks for the time being. I am able to actually make some pretty awesome strides from here, flying act, flying activists and key players here to be interviewed for the documentary and organizing a protest in Sacramento from here and having my camera, um, part, my film partner go down there and film it and whatnot. Like we're about to drop, we're, we've got a lot of media that we're going to start pushing really soon and have a YouTube channel and introduce all these different characters that we're building for the documentary um, that are going to be in the documentary, you know. That's awesome. What was the reaction of the EPA folks to the activist speeches? Uh, well, they, they kind of, I don't know, like, like just stone cold, you know, they're pretty evil folk, but like, I, I, you know, the, the Patrick Roddy, like, like there's a, if you just look at the Patrick Roddy, like I could talk about Max Bliss, Jim Lee, you know, um, all these activists that were there, but the Patrick Roddy, like he's my hero, you know, I really like the guy and, and he came up here for the documentary and we actually, um, not to get off track, but we got some great footage of him for the film and we actually had him interview another hero of mine, Bill Vanderzam, who's former premier of British Columbia. So premier is like a governor, right? So former, um, really active, heroic governor, premier, right, of British Columbia, because, you know, there's provinces in Canada, right? There's like 10 provinces, right? They're big states. And so they have premiers, right? Right. So this premier, Bill Vanderzam, he's well-spoken, like one of the biggest activist politicians out there about on chemtrails. Him and Pernilla Hagberg are like the Pernilla Hagberg, um, the Swedish politician who speaks out about chemtrails. They're going to be my politician. Like, like I'm, you know, of course I'm hitting scientists and activists and politicians and this and that for the documentary. So for my politician bit, I've got half. I'm halfway there. So Patrick Brody, he, his, his speech was just hands down the best. And he he really just had some poignant lines, like really calling the EPA out and saying they needed to do their job, right? And didn't make eye contact with them at all for the whole his whole eleven minutes, except for like these really choice these choice select few times where he's really like you know calling calling out their moral integrity, right? And um, so at this one one juncture, he stops and says, "History will judge you by your action or inaction." Right. And gives them like a glare. And it's so true. Right. They're the regulatory body over our environment. And they're not doing anything about an ongoing toxic aerosol spraying campaign in our skies, in our air, you know. But of course, they're all just puppets, you know. So what can you do? But yeah, the the EPA hearing, which, you know, it's on C-SPAN, it's on YouTube. Um, But if you just Google EPA hearing chemtrails, you'll have them all. And even you can you don't have to watch this for the whole two hours. Each activist has their own like bit on C-SPAN, their own ten minutes, or on YouTube even. But yeah, Max Bliss he ended it, and then second to last is Patrick Roddy um, out of San Francisco. Patrick Roddy out of San Francisco is active. He's constantly active. He's a photographer doing time lapse and reaching out globally. Paris Climate Conference and and um, he has stops www.stopspraying.us-sf like San Francisco. Stop spraying us dash dash sf, and it's a great website, great resource for people that are new to it or people that you know are looking for, you know, um, information to pass on to people that are new to it, and just and even just like calling out the whole agenda because the whole agenda is so wacky because they're really trying to tell ever so they're they're it's like problem reaction solution right yeah it is. So, yeah, so when you start really opening up to it and you realize, you know, you start looking up and you realize that the whole atmospheric aerosol campaign is ongoing, right, and you start putting the docs together, you see that it's a problem, a problem, reaction, solution agenda that they're rolling out on it, on the entire world. So there's California drought. That's a huge false flag. And there's different things all over the world. Like I can't even get – I could get going on weaponized hurricanes in this recent South Carolina – directional atmospheric river fire hose weaponized hurricane arm thing that they did that's just out of this world. But that, you know, you start going getting into that and then, you know, you, you get people lost because you're already going at 80 miles per hour and you got to start them off. Like you really got to hold people's hand through this whole thing. So the problem reaction solution in California, at least, because we can just talk about California drought, drought as an isolated incident, which it isn't, but we'll talk about it like it is. 
So California's route, you create a problem using atmospheric aerosols, using chemtrails, using geoengineering, you know, like the whole terminology, people like to argue about the terminology. I'm just going to say chemtrails, but, you know, you want me to say atmospheric aerosols or whatever, I'll say whatever anybody wants me to say, you know. Just, <laughs> it's all the same thing, really. Yeah, it's just the point is that there's they're spraying dust of particulates in the sky, right? So the problem is the California drought, which is actually caused by the cloud manipulation with the aerosols, okay? The reaction is people freak out. You know, they're full of fear. The mountains have no more snowpack as of this year. I mean, the governor, Jerry Brown, went to the top of the Sierra Nevadas, and he's standing on dead grass where he usually goes and stands on 20 feet of snow in these mountains that provide, you know, like, you see where I'm going? Like, mm-hmm. like give it a couple more years, and L.A. is just going to be, like, it's going to get kind of crazy, I feel like. I don't know. I really hope it doesn't. Now, does that snow melt, and does that provide some of the water resources for Southern California? Yeah, exactly, right? It's It provides a lot of the river the rivers that and and then you know they go fill up the reservoirs and yeah the reservoirs are just going dry you know so yeah so the snowpack's gone they're not getting any as much rain as they should because of the manipulation you know um but then it's just crazy because sometimes it rains and and it's like it's kind of like they don't really want full control they don't want it's just this game it's just this weird 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 game i don't know so either way the problem drought, reaction, fear, you know, but then you get a few rain here and there. So like people are slowly, the fear is just slowly building, you know, it's like kind of this like weird, you know, because if they are so psychopaths, they're not just going to pull the bandaid off. Right. <laughs> so then, which they're obviously psychopaths. So then the solution that they've been coming out with and saying is, Oh, we can, we can engineer the climate. We can save California. I even have an article from like a noteworthy publication or a, a handful even that say is geoengineering. They're like they're they're creating this framed debate, right? The framed debate thing we can get into, which is really interesting. But they um, they say can geoengineering save California, right? <laughs> so there, there there you have this like framed debate. So it's a debate with this perfect little frame around it. So then you open up this debate. Well, can it or can't it? You know? Well, can geoengineering save California? Well, they, there's been studies that show that if you do this and that, you can alter the weather and you can actually put the clouds. If you put a high pressure system around it, you can slow down the system and you can make it rain by adding silver or whatever to the atmosphere, right? And so then the other people are like, no, don't do that. It's dangerous, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's dangerous. But there, but the other people are like, but it, it's going to save the day. All the dangers, like, who cares? Like, we have Monsanto. They'll save us with the aluminum seeds. Like, who cares if the plants die? Uh-huh. And they're like, well, you know what I mean? And it creates this f- fucked up, like, brainwashed, sheeple, like, argument of, like, of like what? You, you, like, you're, like, you double take and you're, like, you guys are back and forth arguing about, like, what about the fact that it's going on over your heads right now? Right now. What about yep. the fact that Awesome the drought, you know, and you, you you end up kind of like your head just starts spinning, and you're like, I have to commit my entire existence to making a documentary to expose this to awaken the masses. Like that's where I'm coming from, you know what I mean? But yeah, so yeah, there there I am. So yeah, the frame debate is really interesting. The geoengineering, you can see it all over in this geoengineering different um, circles and whatnot that are. Yeah, it gets it gets a little frustrating. Like like I mean, the Irish Times. And PBS, oh my gosh, PBS. I used to think that they were, you know, you grow up, PBS, you know? Yeah. But everybody's owned, everybody's owned. There's eight, eight companies, eight entities, eight corporations. They own all of the media on earth. I think it's know? down to five now. Oh, whatever, yeah. I mean, yeah, actually. <laughs> Which is even worse. No, yeah, I don't even, you know, where am I getting that information? Yeah, but what, I mean. So yeah, so that's that's basically what I've got going on. So I came up to Vancouver um, with like kind of a fire under my ass. Didn't really know why I was coming here, and that was just not even a year ago. And then and my first day, I connected with the right circle of people. Some got some people like older than me because um, I'm 35, right? And I got a lot of support from people like decades older than me, which is great because they're really established. And 
Um, I kind of, I guess, like my producer um, and my best friend, he kind of, um, not my now best friend, like I met him day one, my first day here, you know, I met him and maybe he, maybe he saw a potential in me or maybe he just saw the synergies or whatever it is, but he kind of like opened it up and was like, and, and kind of helped me um, get focused on the direction of the documentary and really, you know, kind of pushing forward, you know, and all of a sudden we've got t-shirts and buttons and the world, worldwide, you know, global movement. Whereas before I just had a PowerPoint slide and I was trying to get people like 20 people in a room, you know what I mean? Yeah. Passing out flyers, trying to get 20 people in a room. And now I've got web, web presence that reach millions of people, you know, millions and millions of people. And, you know, I'm just kind of like pushing, 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 pushing. So I think the next couple of years are going to be really like, um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to really be pushing forward, um, the next, I mean, as you know, until I'm going to be pushing forward for the rest of my life. Like this is my, my mission, my passion and my life from this point forth, you know, cause once you kind of awaken, like you're, you have the responsibility to help everyone around you, you know, Thomas Jefferson, right? If you have the ability to help people in need, right, you have the responsibility to help those people, okay? And if all these people are walking around with blinders on and they don't realize that they're getting poisoned every day, but you do, you have the responsibility to try to wake people up to reach critical mass, to raise awareness in a calm, collective manner, to not promote fear mongering, right? And to push and to just to keep on pushing because your energy and your ripple effect is beyond your comprehension, you know? Like you could, like I love the Terminator reference and I don't know if you haven't seen Terminator, I'm sorry, you gotta watch Terminator. But in Terminator, there's this guy, John Connor, John Connor's a hero and he's like a little kid at sometimes. But you could, you, the listener, or the, the friend of the listener, whoever, you, the listener, could wake up John Connor, you know? You can meet some 16-year-old kid or whoever that's the next John Connor. And that's actually, you know, and you wake that person up and you've done so much and you don't even realize because you don't know how powerful your ripple effect can actually be, you know? Because you're dumbed down by everything and I don't, you know, I don't blame you, I'm sorry. But it's <laughs> like, you are so powerful. And, you know, we get on this whole kick on energy and spirituality and whatever, whatever, whatever. But, it, but at the end of the day, you are seriously very, 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 very powerful. And like, you could wake up the next John or John Connor, like you really could. So like, that's, you know, you know, wherever I went with that, you can really push it. But yeah, you know, I'm meeting with some people um, on Friday and I'm going to start um, pushing forward with a, um, some, some media and documentary and just awaken kind of stuff of talking about AI. Cause that, cause the AI, the, the, the AI behind the scenes. I mean, like if you think about the, like the direction of all this stuff, like, like, remember when they cloned Dolly the sheep? Yeah. Right? right? You remember that? Because oh, you don't yeah. remember that. You were probably like, I was I was a teenager and you were probably like 25 or something. Yeah. So that happens, right? And what have we heard? What the fuck have we heard since then, right? And the technology has gone like through the roof. And we haven't like, none of these headlines are hitting like, like uh, you know, Bengal Tiger or like Obama. You know what I mean? Like people say Obama's a clone, but like who fucking knows? Like, like no... News. Well, there was something else going on around the same time that kind of dropped out of the headlines as well, and that's the Human Genome Project, where they're yeah. completely computer mapping it out to the last yeah. detail. Yeah, you, you don't hear that discussed either. Oh my gosh, the 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 late nineties, like humanity was on like a push, right? Humanity was on a push towards something like really, really great. Like if you look at the movies or the music or anything from that time frame, right? And I'm biased. Yeah, but it's still, like, I know, like, kids that are, whatever, they don't realize it. But right after 9-11, everything shifted. Like, 9-11 was so much more strategic than anybody can fucking fathom. And a lot of it was so in your face. Like, the Pentagon, like the Pentagon they could have fucking crashed a plane into the building at least. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like the, the, some of the shit was so in your face and manipulated and fucked up and twisted that it was there to change the frequency of like the fucking planet to fear, right? Because we were going in a beautiful direction, and they just like turned on this like you know it's it's stuff that's that that we that we can't understand. You know, we're not really 
we don't have the knowledge, you know, or the knowledge is buried and we don't really understand it. But like, there's more to it than just than, than just oil. You know what I mean? There's way more to it. It's about creating this ongoing. Like they're looking like a hundred years out. Like they're looking like they're they're totally. They have such a fucked up plan. It's so beyond fucking cool. Yeah, no, I agree with all that. So I want so so basically May seventh is the first annual Global Chemtrail Conference. Okay, I'm going to be hosting that and pushing that. And having that in Vancouver, Canada. But basically the best part about it is that you don't have to be in Vancouver to take part. Okay. It's going to be broadcast live and it's going to have, you know, groundbreaking kind of speakers, politicians. Oh, maybe actually, you know what? I should talk about something in, out of my, um, my documentary. So Bill Vanderzam, the former premier of British Columbia, he was a hero because he rolled back this federal level tax that – they, the federal level brought on this tax called this GST, okay? It's a sales tax that was going to be implemented in British Columbia and, like, be stuck for good. So people were going to be getting fucked over on some tax every time they bought anything, right? And it got implemented, and the governor, the premier, he fought it. Bill Vanderson fought it, fought it, fought it, tooth and nail, and got it reversed. Huh. And everybody was like, well, what a guy. And it still hasn't come back, and it's been, like, 15 years, right? So he's the guy that's, like, you know, active against Kim Trails. And, like, when he met... When I met him, he was so awesome and open and was like, listen, anything that I can do, we have to win this. Like, I'm so happy you're doing this and stuff, right? Because like, I've, ever since I came to Vancouver, I've just been pushing, pushing, pushing. I got we've – spent, we've spent uh, quite, quite a fortune on uh, like, a, like beautiful film gear, all these lenses, like the whole thing. I've got a production company, West Coast Truth Productions now. Like I started a production company. Like, like the, everybody can play their part. Right, like if you knit, you can knit some awakened thing talking about uh, Monsanto or chemtrails or whatever. Like knit for truth. Like like every single person has a role they can play. You know, whether it's waking up somebody that is going to be the next John Connor or just putting a flyer at your local coffee shop. You know, like you don't really realize the domino effect, the ripple effect that you have by helping by just like getting the word out kind of thing. And the and the important thing with that is. Is a lot of people are waking up, but they feel isolated and alone. So the more people oh that get outspoken gosh, about, know. you know, me all the time, right? And then the more you do it, the more you realize there actually are more people than you realize. Yeah, they're everywhere, but it's so hard for people to connect because it's, it's like these topics that they don't even want to get brought up. There's the stigma to it, you know, and and yeah, that's exactly. got to stop, man. I mean, we at least to each other, we we've got to stop that. We've got to get over. It. If people think you're crazy. Okay, yeah. then obviously you can't help that person move on to the next one. Yeah. So check it out. So this is going to be in the documentary. So Patrick Roddy, my hero, is interviewing Bill Van Der Zam, our other hero, right? And talking to him about atmospheric aerosols, geoengineering, the ongoing, you know, what's going on and like how did he wake up to it and all that sort of stuff. And the story of Bill Van Der Zam is that his wife started talking to him about it. You know, what is going on in the skies? And then he started getting – Letters and letters, boxes of letters, boxes and boxes of letters from constituents. You know, you got to do something about this. I tested my water, all these independent people. I tested my rainwater. I tested my soil. Aluminum, aluminum, patents on aluminum. You know, everybody knows, right? Now, this is 15 years ago this is happening? Yeah, yeah. And building up to a recent, like, five-year-ago um, interaction where Bill Van Der Zam reached out to his global-level federal politicians, Right. His all his contacts. He got all his Rolodex. He's a high level, global level federal politician, right? He reaches out and requests freedom of information requests. What is going on with these lines in the sky? What is going on? Okay. He got a response from Canada's federal level, right? And they said, top secret, whatever you know, um, federal, you know, federal level document, you know, not sorry, not top secret, but federal level, you know, it's got the whole insignia and everything. And it says, yes, there's an ongoing geoengineering global campaign in effect for research. And and it's black lines for like six pages, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then it's like, furthermore, and then it's like black lines for another few pages, right? And then it's like, it elaborates a little bit and it's all horse shit, you know? But basically it admits to it though. It fucking admits to it, okay? And he gives us the original copy on camera, right? On That's camera. awesome. In the, in the documentary, two of my heroes conversing about the 
most passionate topic I can think of. And because it's global, you know, and it's right, in, it's like right in front of our face. And people need to really wake up to it because if you can wake up to chemtrails, then you can wake up to all of it. Like if you if you can take that leap and say, wow, I'm going to look up and wow, that's not normal. You know, the, the thing is, is when you start getting in arguments about with people about the science, there's this thing called relative humidity, right? And if the humidity in the atmosphere is below 72%, then persistent contrails cannot exist, okay? Because there's not enough moisture in the sky for the water particles to condense and team up and create those persistent lines, okay? It's just, you know, it's literally science, right? So once it gets cold enough and once the humidity level breaks over that 70% threshold, then the persistent lines can occur, right? So if you ever see persistent lines in the sky, you know, and you like how I'm saying persistent lines instead of chemtrails, it's for to talk to people that don't want to listen to me. <laughs> so then the persistent lines in the sky, it, if you see them, because it, it's, it's often, it really is often, and it's almost everywhere. Like I'd like to find somebody who says I never see it, you know, because give it a month of looking at the sky, and if you know what you're looking for, because sometimes they spray it, like on the edge of the system and then the wind blows it and it's all breaking up once it gets over you. You can still see it a little bit, but it like breaks up and it just looks like a haze, you know? Well, I can tell you for an absolute fact, and I've taken numerous pictures that have gone up on the internet. They yeah. absolutely annihilate the southern Louisiana area where I'm at. I mean, just complete tic-tac-toe covering the sky. Yeah, and then it makes you question like, what is what is that? Like, what are they doing exactly then and there? Like, what is the chemical concoction because i feel like that they're doing different stuff in different places like they literally are because they'll, they'll spray in california it won't rain then like i'll go back to the east coast to visit people in boston you come you see them spraying but then like the storm just stays put and they spray 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 and then it, it dumps like 10 feet of snow it's like they're creating a lush environment on the northeast you know boston dc new york all this stuff but they're just like ruining california like are they doing it like why, you know, whatever. But, um, 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 Bill Vandersam gave the thing, chemtrails. Hey, in the documents, does it say who's actually doing the spraying? Like, is it the individual country's governments? Like, their military? Is that who's doing the spraying? No, but you know what's interesting? If you really want to, um, another interesting tidbit about, um, geoengineering, global geoengineering campaigns, who's behind it? And its effect on like targeting different countries is the uh, former president of Iran, right? And so Iran is like an established country. Like all this fear mongering bullshit about Iran and they're coming up with nuclear weapons, we should be worried and all that stuff. It's all it's all bullshit. Like if you never met an Iranian person or anything like that, they're a developed, freaking advanced country oh, yeah. um, with with a big military and all that sort of stuff. But um, the former president or premier, I forget what it's called over there, prime minister, whatever it is, he came out publicly and said, I was approached by one of my contacts in Europe, and I was informed that Europe is preventing the rain from coming to Iran. And he's like, he, this, is a, this is live. You can find this on YouTube. It's, it's actually a lot of them got taken down. It's weird. <laughs> so, and he said, and I, and I thought my European contact was crazy. Europe stealing the rain from Iran. That is insanity. So I had my people look into it, right? He says, my specialists, they come back. They tell me that Europe is spraying atmospheric aerosols in the storm systems before they come, soaking up the rain, preventing the rain from falling over Iran, right? Huh. And you see, like, Iran, record heat. Like, freak, like, I mean, like, I'm up here in Canada, so it's Celsius. But for all my Americans, God bless, I can speak Fahrenheit. It was like 155 degrees in Iran over, you know, the summer, like record-breaking heat over Iran, you know what I mean? And it's like you start getting into the heart thing. You go down that rabbit hole, and once the metal particulates are in the sky, you can heat them up with heart, and then you can, like, cook an atmosphere and cook, like, you know, there's all this stuff. So they're preventing it. They're causing drought. You know, like, okay, yeah, they, they like the sanctions. The sanctions, the money's going into Iran. Whatever, like, they're... They're poisoning, you know, and heating up the, and giving them the drought and all this stuff. It's like there's weather warfare ongoing, global, and it's just like NATO countries or even just the U.S. is in charge of it, and they're just completely evil. Well, this whole New World Order, for lack of a, any other term, yeah, it seems like the United States' inner 
uh, what would you call it? The military industrial complex yeah. is kind of behind it all is kind of pushing yeah. the global pieces around the chessboard. That it is, that it is, you know, you do know, Oh man, we could go down the rabbit hole on nine 11 for a little bit, but that's probably in a whole nother episode. You know what? I wouldn't mind if you don't, if you want, like, you know, once you knock out a few more episodes, I wouldn't mind coming on, maybe come on with someone else and kind of talk about some, some stuff. Like I really am passionate about, uh, uh, just about everything else that is crimes against humanity that's ongoing. Yeah, sure. You know? I mean, have you seen the have you seen the documentary Dirty Wars? No, I haven't seen that one. It's an award winning documentary about a um, an investigative journalist goes to Afghanistan investigating these night raids that are going on, and come to find out, it's just like this this crazy black ops um, U.S. U.S. crew that like this 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 U.S based military organization got created when we went into Iraq and we had this deck of cards, right? The deck of cards was, I would, we have to find all these people on this deck of cards and arrest them, you know, but let's be, let's face it. Most of those people got killed, right? And I, you know, the king of Ace of Spades or whatever was, was, you know, um, Saddam and like, you know, Saddam's brother, all this stuff. You remember all that hoopla, right? Yes. And then like all the, you, actually you're down in Louisiana. So a bunch of, I bet a bunch of rednecks, you know, were like owning the deck of cards. No offense if you owned the deck of cards, right? So like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was just like totally mar- marketing, you know, like crazy. Like these people, like, let's go kill these people. Like, holy shit. Right. <laughs> so, and like, what did they do? Right. They supported, uh, Afghanistan. Dan Osama bin Laden, like the, the connection, like weapons of mass destruction, you know, what the fuck even, you know, whatever there. So, so once that crew was done with their deck of cards, they're like, holy shit, we have all these resources. We're over here. We're totally expert, you know, SEALs, Navy SEALs, all this sort of stuff, whatever. Um, Marines, you know, whatever, like the baddest of the bad. They were like, okay, well, we're just going to keep this rolling, but let's make another list. They make another list of people to kill. So they have a whole other enemy list in, in, in Sudan or somewhere or in Afghanistan, right? And then – or in Iraq. And then once that list is over, like the, the journalist was uncovering that once that list was up, that then a new list is formed. And, and now, you know, fast forward because it's been a while since, since, since 9-11, since that deck of cards, since Iraq. Now – the list is just this ongoing thing, and the U.S. is in over 140 countries, right? And they're doing night raids, and they're just creating enemies. Like, they'll literally go into a village and just create enemies because it's it's their job, you know? They'll just go kill some families, and it's just total, total chaos. So, do you know that there was a hurricane off the coast of 9-11? On, I mean, did you know that there was a hurricane off the coast in the Atlantic during 9-11 that dissipated? And there's theories that... The energy was harnessed, um, scalar energy was harnessed to, like, take down Building 7. Do you know about Building 7 and, and BBC and how it was? Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, oh, you got it. I know all that stuff. It was announced early and all that. I right. did not know about the uh, about the potential of a, of a storm being broken up and used. Oh, yeah, man. That's that's just wild information. Like, it dissipated right when the, right when the buildings were, you know, because concrete and steel was dustified. You know, you can't really explain that using super thermite. Right. Like, the like super thermite doesn't necessarily even explain the dustification of concrete and steel, you know? Right. There definitely seems to be more to it than conventional wisdom can put its finger on. Right. Exactly. Why don't you give out your websites and anything you have that you want for people to find you? Okay. So currently, it's just a social media outreach. Um, we do own meetthefrankens.com and frankensky.com but i've yet to you know right now budget is tight and i'm using my my resources to allocate for the film right so once the film is done being shot then the websites will get launched so right now i'm just on social media but meet the frankens is a facebook page Um, a lot of awakened information piled in there and updates on the film and everything in there and meet the frankens is the um, umbrella, right? Like I said, meet the Frankens, Franken Sky, Franken Food, Franken Children. So Franken Sky, the movie, Franken Sky, you can find me on Facebook um, through Franken Sky. That's a page. And then the uh, mothership that's been around for a month and has been garnering lots of attention and it's got really great content actually is my baby, Actual Activists, right? Actual Activists is a community 
and it's it's rapidly growing and I get these metrics on it and I can see my post reach and everything and we're really reaching we're really reaching a lot of people like I hit um I wanted to be able to reach a million people a week and we're hitting like 1.5 million people per week and the the likes are you know rolling in you know it's been a month and we've got 6000 something likes but I I see I see it really growing rapidly exponentially and I I think that we'll be able to break 10,000 and then you know 100,000 likes pretty pretty quick actually you know in, in the whole scheme of things like like a year from now like um Matt Landman as an activist an actual activist and Frank and Sky and meet the Frankens and all that stuff it'll be it'll be on the map so you know yeah please find me on there and then you know send me a friend request Matt Landman is my name uh L A N D M A N but especially actual activists if I, if you can give me a like on there and start following us over there you know, the stuff is a little controversial, but it's, you know, we're pushing the envelope and we're trying to find like-minded people to, to unify, right? So you got to push the envelope to find the right people sometimes. Yeah, I totally agree there. Awesome, Matt. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And thanks again for reaching out to me, man. It's been really great uh, talking with you. Thanks, Matt. Really great information. People really need to look into this stuff. It's quite serious. And that's it, folks. We'll see you soon. <laughs>